Hey, this is LearnAlgebraFaster.com, and in this video, we are going to discuss some bar graph examples with explanations. So, we've talked about in past videos that bar graphs are a way to visually show data, and more importantly, we visually show quantitative data, so that's data that you can count. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples and go through what the key parts of a bar graph are and what the graphs are showing us. So on the left side, we start out at the top, and the most important part of any bar graph is the title. And that's pretty simple because that explains what this graph is talking about. So in this case, it's asking, what is your favorite fruit? So that is going to let you know what to expect on the graph. So we're going to expect different types of fruit and we're going to probably count the people who would say that they uh, they have their favorite fruit. So we've discussed the title. Now let's discuss the vertical axis, which is the one pointing straight up and down. So that's that's this line right here. And we see that we start off with a minimum number of 0 and we go all the way up to a maximum number of 20. Now that we've discussed that, let's look at the horizontal axis, which is the one going left and right here on the bottom. And this is where we usually see our groups or our categories of what we're measuring. So in this case, it's pretty easy to see, and we kind of figured this out by the title, that the groups that we're discussing are actually different types of fruit. So in this case, apple, orange, banana, and kiwi. So the fourth key part of a graph is actually called the key and that is this little box right here that shows what each color is about on the graph so in green we see that classroom A is shown in green so that's their votes and the purple shows classroom B so this is just these are two classrooms of, of, of of school children or something like that or two different two different classrooms two different groups of people and we're going to see what their favorite fruits are so when we look at the chart we can see that for instance class A shows that eight people say that apple is their favorite fruit and seven people show that apple is their favorite fruit in class B and as we as we look we can see differences so apples are about the same oranges are about the same but now we get to banana and we see a lot more people in classroom A like bananas so 15 people like bananas and only five people prefer kiwis so there's a big difference there and then also we look at kiwi and we see that lots of people in class B, so 17 people in class B, have a favorite fruit of kiwi, and only three people in classroom A. So when we look at this chart, we see that different groups of people, so groups A and B, are taking a vote on what their favorite fruits are, and this is the result. So we would be able to measure all of these, all of these bars and find out not only how many people like each fruit but also if we added all the green we could find out the total number of people in class A and if we and if we added all the totals of the purple we could figure out how many people were in class B so that's that's pretty cool so so bar charts show lots of data in groups and then in lots of cases you can add them all together to get the size of the whole population okay let's move on to example number two we will start at the top with the title. And this graph has a title of candy prices in each state. So this would be states in the in the USA. So candy prices, so we're expecting to be measuring the price which would be, you know, in this case in a dollar value. And then it also gives us a signal that the groups here are the states. So this title is really good because it talks about prices, which is what you can count, and state, which is how you could group things. So when we look at the vertical axis, of course, we see we see dollar values. So we see prices on the vertical axis. It looks like the maximum price is $4 and the minimum price is 0, which is pretty common, but 
all you have to all you really have to know is this minimum number can be anything it just has to be smaller than the lowest number on the chart and this maximum number of four dollars can be anything it just needs to be higher than the highest bar on the graph and that way all the data shows up and nothing is nothing is hidden all right let's go down to the the horizontal axis and we see that we are measuring three different states so California New York and Texas and then the the fourth important part of this graph is the key so in this case the key shows that the green bars represent this year and the purple bars represent next year and it's an estimation because obviously that's in the future so maybe some analysis has been done maybe some trending data has been done maybe um, some mathematicians have made a forecast for what they think next year's prices are going to be so we can see that for a given candy it actually looks like next year the prices are going to go down in California so they were three dollars this year and they're going to be something like two dollars and forty cents next year on the other side in New York it actually looks like from this year to next year the prices are going to go up and also in Texas they're going to stay pretty much the same but they are going to go up just a little bit so that's again that's an estimation but you can see what the price will 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 likely do in a given state and how it's different. one state it goes down one state it goes up a lot one state it just barely goes up and is kind of you know it's about the same so this example shows how you can find data because you can measure the differences between two things all right let's go to our final example in this video and let's look at a big chart with lots of data on it so despite this being a pretty complicated chart we're going to still go through the same process so we're still going to start with the title and in this case it says business profits per year so we're looking at businesses and what are what are we measuring we're measuring the profits so this is going to be some sort of money some sort of money calculation in this case it's going to be it's going to be dollars and what is going to be the group the groups are going to be per year so that's the title it explains what this chart is so let's go to the axes we start with the vertical axis and just like we expected it shows dollar values here now one thing that's pretty cool about bar graphs is that they are easy to scale and you can change the scale on these so right now this chart shows going from from zero dollars all the way up to half a million dollars but what's really cool about bar graphs is that this could very easily be 500 million dollars if we if we wanted to change it so these numbers these numbers can change they can be really big they can be really small but as long as they continue to go up as you go up the chart you're still going to get useful information so that's one thing that's cool about bar graphs is that they scale easily in the fact that they can be they can measure really small things but they can also measure really large things so now that we've talked about the vertical axis let's talk about the the horizontal axis and as the title showed these are measured and grouped by year so we're talking about year one of the business all the way through year number seven of the business and so this bar graph is really cool because we will get to see the change over time all right the last part of the graph as always is the key now one thing that's really cool about this key is that it will show that there are three different colors three different types of businesses that we get to measure so the green bars are going to show a pet food business the blue bars are going to measure a software company and the red bar is going to measure video games so let's take a look at the data and see how these businesses operate let's start with the first one pet food so when we look in year one pet food barely has any profits 
and in year two it still barely has any profits and in year three it barely has any profits but it is going up just a little bit now in year four you see quite a bit of difference in year five you see even more difference in year six you see a lot of growth and then in year seven you see that it has made more money than any business in the whole chart so one thing that's cool about bar graphs is that you can see a trend and this trend seems to be starting low and going up high so now let's talk about the software company in blue so the software company in blue when we when we take a look at year one that's this bar right here and we see that it, it similar to pet food it starts out with with very low profits but it does make a pretty good jump in year two it makes another jump in year three it makes another jump in year four and actually as you look at it it starts off with about fifty thousand dollars in profit then a hundred then 150 then 200 then 250 then 300 and then 350 so actually this software company is growing about the same rate every single year so it actually if you connected all the bars it makes a straight line so that's the type of growth that it's growing over the seven year period is that it's growing it's growing steadily kind of in a linear fashion whereas the pet food had more of a curve and it started out low and slow and then had some major growth and it was more of an exponential graph now let's take a look at the third business which is video games so video games starts off making lots of money four hundred thousand dollars in the first year then 380 in the second year 420 in the third year back to 400 in the fourth year then it dips just a little bit to to 360,000 then it's back to 400 and then it's up to you know 410,000 um, there so as we look from year one to year seven it starts and ends in about the same in about the same place so actually that graph looks pretty flat it has some ups and downs but it's pretty flat so bar graphs are super useful we we mentioned that they can scale so the numbers that you measure can start out it could be it could be five dollars it could be five hundred dollars it could be five hundred thousand dollars it could be five hundred million dollars so the the graphs can scale and also another thing that's cool about bar graphs is that you can make these trends where like video games were flat software was very consistent and pet food was exponential where it starts out slow and then grows grows rapidly so bar graphs are super easy if you were just looking at a bunch of numbers on a page you might not be able to understand how the how the graphs are changing over time but with a bar graph you can plot it all out and you can see the changes over time and you can find out trends you can find out comparisons and you can do like full full grouping calculations so I hope this has been helpful I wanted to run through a couple of examples and do some deep explanation of the bar graphs and so that you would so that you would understand that they're not just about pretty colors they actually show good data and in some cases like this graph they can be really helpful because you can put lots of information on them and you can find trends you can scale them and you can you can see you can see them very easily for more information like this, for more videos about bar graphs and for videos about lots of other algebra topics, I want you to check out our website at learnalgebrafaster.com. Thanks.